guys, welcome back to our channel. This is George Committee, and you are watching George Committee e learning platform for structural engineering training. Now, today we are going to analyze a portal frame that is unsymmetrically loaded. And this portal frame, we got the we got the joints A, B, C, D, or we got members. This portal frame, we got members A, B, B, C, as well as C, D. The columns AB and CD are of equal length, that is 4 meters, but the beam BC is unsymmetrically loaded, meaning that the load of 4 kN is not subjected at its center. You can see clearly that uh, the point load of 4 kN is subjected at a distance of 1.5 meters from B and 2.5 meters from C. And that means that the portal frame is unsymmetrically loaded. And therefore, it will be analyzed first by assuming it as a continuous beam and then applying a sway correction. First of all, we are going to assume a portal frame ABCD to be split up into fixed beams. A, B, C, uh, to, into fixed beams A, B, B, C, as well as C, D. So first of all, we are going to treat it as a continuous beam. Like the one I have described here. So we got uh, the member AB, we got the member BC, and the member BC is the one that is loaded with a point load of 4 kN. And we got the member CD. So the first thing we are going to do, we are going to determine the fixing end moments. And in this case, we are going to begin with the fixing end moment at BC because it is the only, uh, it is the member that is loaded. The member AB as well as CD, they are not loaded. So let's begin with span BC and in this case the fixing end moment at B is going to be an anti-cropoise moment and for that case we are going to have this formula negative W AB squared divided by L squared and the fixed end moment at B will be equal to negative W 4 kN multiplied by A 1.5 meters that is the distance BE. Then multiply by B, which is 2.5 meters, and then we square it. Then divide by the span B to C, which is 4 meters. And that is going to give us a fixing end moment of negative 2.34 kilonewtons meter. So that is the fixing end moment at, at B. Then the fixing end moment at C, that's going to be a clockwise moment. And it will be given by this formula, positive W A squared B over L squared. So this will be given by positive W, which is 4 kilonewtons multiplied by A, 1.5 squared, multiplied by B, 2.5 meters. Then divide this by L squared, which is 4 squared. And that is going to give us a fixing end moment of 1.4 kilonewtons meter. Then going to the, the span AB, in the span AB, the fixing end moment at A as well as the fixing end moment at B are going to be zero because the span AB or the member AB is not loaded with any load. Uh, in the same case, for the member CD, the fixing end moment at C as well as the fixing end moment at D are also going to be zeros since that member is also not loaded. Then after that, we are going to, be, uh, to determine what we call the stiffness factors. So we go to stiffness factors. And in this case, we are going to begin with stiffness factors. We are going to begin with the stiffness factors for members BA as well as member BC. So the stiffness factor for member BA and BC will be given by the following formulas, starting with the KBA, stiffness factor for member BA. That will be given by um, that will be given by 3 EI divided by L. 
3i divided by L since the end A is hinged. And when an end is hinged, that is the formula of determining the stiffness factor. And this is going to be 3EI divided by L, which is 4 meters, that is the span BA. Then from there, we go to stiffness factor for member BC. And this is going to, uh, this will be given by 4EI divided by L. 4EI because the beam is continuous at C. So when you consider it as a continuous beam, you'll find that it is continuous beyond C. And on, for a continuous beam, that is the formula of determining the stiffness factor. And this will be given by 4EI divided by the span BC, that is 4 meters. And in short, that will be EI, since the force are going to cancel out. Then from there, we determine the summation of stiffness factors, which will be KBA plus KBC. So KBA plus KBC, this is going to be 3EI over 4 plus EI. And that's going to give us 7EI divided by 4. So that is the summation of the stiffness factors. Then after determining the stiffness factors for members B and BC, we are going to determine their distribution factors. And starting with distribution factor for member BA, this will be given by stiffness factor for member BA divided by the summation of stiffness factors. And this is going to be stiffness factor for BA, that is 3EI divided by 4 then we divide this by the summation of stiffness factors which is 7 ei over 4 so 7 ei over 4 and that is going to give us a distribution factor of 3 over 7 so that is the distribution factor for member ba then we determine the distribution factor for member bc this will be given by stiffness factor for member BC divided by the summation of stiffness factors. And this is going to be EI divided by the summation of stiffness factors. And that is going to give us a distribution factor for member BC of 4 over 7. Then after that, we go to the stiffness factors for member CB as well as CD. So stiffness factors for members CB and CD. Now starting with the stiffness factor for member CB, that is KCB, that will be given by 4EI divided by L. 4EI divided by L because the beam is continuous at B. And that's going to be the formula of determining the stiffness factor. And this will be given by 4EI divided by L, which is 4 meters, which will give us 4EI. Then the stiffness factor for member CD, this will be given by 3EI divided by L. Since the member CD is hinged at D. So for a hinged member, that is the formula of determining the stiffness factor. And this will give us 3EI over L, which is 4. And then we determine the summation of stiffness factors. And this is going to give us EI plus 3EI divide this by 4 and definitely that will give us a stiffness factor of 7EI over 4. Then after that we determine their distribution factors. So we go to uh, distribution factors for members CB and CD.
member CD and for member CB and CD. Now, the distribution factor for member CB will be given by stiffness factor for member uh, CB. Stiffness factor for member CB over the summation of stiffness factors. And this is going to be um, EI divided by the summation of stiffness factors which is 7 EI over 4 and that's going to give us a distribution factor for member CB of 4 over 7. Then we determine the distribution factor for member CD. This will be given by stiffness factor for member CD divided by the summation of stiffness factors. This will be equal to Stiffness factor for CD, that is 3EI over 4, then divided by the summation of stiffness factors, that is 7EI divided by 4. And that's going to give us a distribution factor for member CD of 3 over 7. So, that is it. Now, from there, we are now going to fill the distribution table um, so that we get the final moments in that case. So, join me as we do that. Now, we have our distribution table here and uh, as always, we begin with the joints. So, in this case, we have four joints. Joint A, B, C, D, written above. Then, below the joints, we got the spans. For joint A, we got the span AB or member AB. For joint B, we got two members BA and BC written side to side. For joint C, we got member CB and CD written side to side. And for joint D, we got member DC. Then from there, we got the distribution factors, the ones we had already calculated. Uh, for member BA, we got 3 over 7. Member BC, 4 over 7. Member CB. 4 over 7, CD, 3 over 7. Then the fixed end moments, we had the fixed end moment for member BC, which was negative 2.34. And that for member CB was 1.40. The other fixed end moments were zeros since the member AB and the CD are not loaded. Then from there, we now uh, go to distribute. And remember, in distribution, we usually change signs. For example, on joint B, we got an excess moment of positive 2.34. Change the negative to positive. Then distribute by the value of the distribution factors. So for member B, we are going to have positive 2.34 times 3 over 7, which is positive 1.00. For member BC, we are going to have positive 2.34 multiplied by 4 over 7 that's going to be 1.34 come to joint c excess a uh, moment negative 1.40 change the positive to negative then distribute on both members for member cb we are going to have minus 1.40 times 4 over 7 that is negative 0 0.80 for member cd we are going to have a uh, negative 1.40 times 3 over 7 that is negative 0.6 then after distributing, carry over. So we are going to carry over half of positive 1.34 from joint B to joint C. And that's going to be positive 0 0.67. Remember the carryover factor is always a half. <coughs> Sorry. Likewise, from joint C, we are going to carry half of negative 0 0.80 to joint B. That's going to be negative, negative 0 0.40. Yep. Negative 0 0.40. Likewise, from joint C, we are going to call it half of negative 0 0.80 to joint B, which is negative for uh, 0 0.40. Then after that, we go to distribution. Remember, the Steps are always distribute, carry over, distribute, carry over, distribute, carry over, until we arrive at the required degree of precision. Distribution. We got an excess moment of positive 0 0.40. Change the negative sign to positive. 
So this is going to be on member BA, we are going to distribute 0 0.40 multiplied by video over 7, that is positive 0 0.17. On member BC, positive 0 0.40 multiplied by 4 over 7, that is positive 0 0.23. Come to joint C, we got an excess moment of negative 0 0.67. Distribute on member CB. A negative 0 0.67 times 4 over 7, that is negative 0 0.38. On member C, D, negative 0 0.67 times 3 over 7, that is negative 0 0.29. After distributing, carry over. So, half of negative 0 0.38 is carried over from joint C to joint B. That's going to be negative 0 0.19. Uh, That's going to be negative 0 0.19. Half of positive 2... Half of positive 0 0.23 is carried over to joint uh, C. That is going to be positive 0 0.12. Then after that, we distribute since we haven't yet arrived at the required degree of precision. Now, on uh, the joint B, we got an excess moment of positive 0 0.19. Change the negative to positive. Then distribute on member BA. Positive 0 0.19 times 3 over 7, that is positive 0 0.08. On member BC, positive 0 0.19 multiplied by 4 over 7, that is positive 0 0.11. Go to member, go to joint C. On member CB, before you go to that, we got an excess moment of negative 0 0.12. Change the positive sign to negative. Then distribute on member CB, negative 0 0.12 times 4 over 7, that is negative 0 0.07. On member CD, Negative 0 0.12 times 3 over 7, that is negative 0 0.05. Then after that, carry over. Half of 0 0.11 is carried over from joint uh, B to joint C, which is going to be positive 0 0.06. Half of negative 0 0.07 is carried over from joint C to joint B. That's going to be negative 0 0.04. Then finally, we go to distribute. Remember, you cannot stop at the carry over uh, step. We always uh, we always uh, stop at the distribution uh, step. Then on the distribution, we got an excess moment of positive 0 0.04 on joint B. Change the negative sign to positive. Then distribute on member BA. We are going to have positive 0 0.04 times 3 over 7. That is positive 0 0.02. On member BC, um, positive 0 0.04 multiplied by 4 over 7, that is positive 0 0.02. Then on joint C, member CB, on joint C, first of all, we got an excess moment of negative 0 0.06. Then distribute on member CB, negative 0 0.06 multiplied by 4 over 7, that is negative 0 0.03. On member CD, Negative 0 0.06 multiplied by 3 over 7, that is negative 0 0.03. Then, finally, we go to final moments, and we are adding from fixed end moments all the way to the last distribution section. So here we are going to have 1 plus 0 0.17 plus 0 0.08 plus 0 0.02, that is positive 1.27. Likewise, on member BC, adding all this, negative 2.34. Plus 1.34 minus 0 0.40 all the way to plus 0 0.02. That's going to be minus 1.27. Likewise, on member CB, we add on member CD, we do the same. And we get 0 0.97 and negative 0 0.97 respectively. Then finally, DC, we got 0. Then we are going to have what we call the free body diagram. But before you go to free body diagram, we need the horizontal reaction at A as well as at D. So on the free body diagram, this is what we call a free body diagram. The first thing we are going to do, we are going to light our moments at each joint. Now on joint B, on member B, we got positive 1.27. So this is positive 1.27 kilonewtons meter. On member B, C, we got negative 1.27. So 1.27. Uh, on joint C, member CB, we got positive 0 0.97. That is positive. 
And then on member CD, we got negative 0 0.97. Then from there, we are going to determine the horizontal reactions. That is horizontal reaction at A as well as horizontal reaction at D. Now, starting with horizontal reaction at A, it will be given by the moment at B, which is 1.27 divided by the span A to B, which is 4 meters. That is going to give us a horizontal reaction of 0 0.32 kilonewtons. Then the horizontal reaction at D, this one is going to act on the, towards the right hand side because it is positive. It is a positive uh, reaction. The horizontal reaction at D will be given by this moment at C, which is negative 0 0.97. Then we divide by the span A, C to D, which is 4 meters as well. And that is, uh, that is 0 0.24 kilonewtons, negative 0 0.24 kilonewtons. So it is going to act towards the left hand side since it is negative then because of uh, the differences in these reactions we are going to have an excess moment that we act at uh, the joint c that excess moment will be given by the difference between these two moments so we are going to have 0 0.32 minus 0 0.24 which is 0 0.08 kilonewtons. It is going to act towards this direction. So the horizontal reaction at A we got it as 0 0.32 kilonewtons. That is HA. Then the horizontal reaction at D we got it as 0 0.24. It is acting towards the left direction. Now to balance this uh, horizontal reaction of 0 0.32 we are going to have a uh, horizontal force acting at C, a horizontal force of 0 0.08 kilonewtons. So that when you add these two forces, uh, these two horizontal reactions, they balance with this horizontal reaction at A, which is 0 0.32 kilonewtons. So this is what we call a free body diagram. Free body diagram. Very good.